right, I'm gonna I'm uh, uh, leave with this song. I was trying to my voice. Uh, Y'all know I like to sing, but I want to sing this as encouragement. I know we're going through some things, <clears throat> but I want to sing this song, y'all, now in my voice and all the way back. But I love this song. And so I didn't put my keyboard out in time. I, we, I might bring Brian over here one time and put him away, away from me. But I want to sing, God's going to bring us through this. Do you understand? There's <clears throat> a lot of chaos in the world. But God will supply because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadows grass, y'all. And he leads me beside the quiet scripture stream and he restores my family's health. Yes, he does. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm saved in his arms. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass, y'all. And he leads me and he restores my family's health. Yes, he does. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. Safe in his arms. And when the storm When the storms of life and the billows, oh, the billows, oh, they begin to roll. Don't you know that I'm, I'm so glad, I'm glad he will have me, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad, I'm glad that he will, he will have me when the storms of life are raging and I can't find a resting place. He, he shall, he shall hide me. I'm I'm so glad, I'm glad he will have me, I'm saved in his arms, yes I am, so remember you are saved. And when the storms of life are raging and you feel like you can't find that peace in that resting place, I tell you, God will. He will hide you in his pavilion. Keep your faith. Because there's nothing that's going to come your way that God, no problem, no storm that God can't stop or cure. But remember, because you don't get out of the storm right away, don't mean that he's not with you. And aren't we glad to know today that he's in the storm with us? We're not alone. 
We're never alone when we serve the Lord. You know, sometimes the enemy men want to make you feel like, oh, you can't make it. He tried to get you to look at all the difficulties around you. People are suffering losses. They're losing loved ones to the COVID or they're, they're dying just natural causes or whatever is coming along in their life, all the storms and that are coming into your lives right now. Sometimes you're in a state of confusion. I just feel like, you know, ministering to you tonight. You got to remember that in the storm, he will hide you, which means you're under his divine protection. You don't have to worry. Don't worry about tomorrow. You know, God has taken us through this pandemic. Some of you, we see people in lines. You may be in lines, but you got food. Some of you don't have to be in the line. You could give God the praise for that. Because in spite of all the things that's working around you, I need you to realize that, yes, you've been through storms. Some of you've seen God move in other times, but these are different times. These are perilous times. These are uncertain times. But you know what? God is bringing you out a different way. You know, we're so used to the normal. We're so used to the way God used to do it. But when we look, even though we're closed behind closed doors, people are suffering from mental illnesses because of this. But we got a sound mind. Hallelujah. And and, and to those of you that don't have a praise, you ought to have a praise. Because remember, this is not for you to worry about. This storm is not meant for you to be destroyed. This storm is to get you to see God in it. You see, what I mean by seeing God in it is that You know, we are used to being around each other and we thought we saw God when we were worshiping in the church and we thought we were feeling God when we were all gathering together or or, or when we could be close to each other or when we could go to another church or when we could go to a revival. But look at this. We're in a place right now that we can have the one-on-one with God. Hallelujah. That's not... Everybody's not around you anymore. God is trying to give you a new experience. You need to receive that experience because God in the midst of the pandemic shows himself. How do he show himself? You know, a lot of times I've talked about going to the other side. We're going to the other side now. We have seen the other side, but we're going to the other side. But in the midst of moving forward, we have to be in a place of storm. Now, the storm is here. Believe it or not, so that we can love him more and get closer. You see, we have no choice because we're all crapped in here together. You're in your house. You're locked up. You can't always be around other people. So in, in, instead of conversing a lot with other people, you learn to talk to God. And you know what? You cry, Master, I perish. But God says you will not perish. You see, when you look to him, when you look to God, Who's there with you? Do you realize that sometimes you go through problems and you can't see no way where God could be in that? Say, no way God is in this. Not the way I'm going through it. Ain't no way. I I must have lost my way with God. I I, I don't know how. I I can't sleep at night. I can't do this. But you know what? If you begin to look to his word, believe his promises, look to him. If God said you can walk, you can walk. You remember when Peter looked up to Jesus and Peter, they were all in the storm. Hallelujah. The other disciple was hovering in fear. They didn't come out of the ship. It was one that criticized Peter. But the thing about Peter was Peter wasn't afraid to speak his mind. Peter didn't keep silent about his fears or he gave about his questions. And sometimes we want to question God. I'm just led to do this. Sometimes we want to say, God, why this, why that, why this? But then when when you get in the questioning stage, he understands. But he want to let you know that a storm is necessary because storms build faith. Remember when Peter first saw him, he thought it was just a ghost. But after he got more into the storm, the storm was still severe. His spiritual vision was more clear. Instead of seeing a severe storm, he saw God in it. We're in the pandemic. Can you see God in it? 
Hallelujah. Can you see what God is right there? We want Paris, but in order to get to the other side, we had to face the tempest. That's what this is. That's all it is. But if we were not Paris, somebody said, well, some of the saints went on, they're still living. They're going on to be with the Lord. It doesn't matter how it go, but you keep your eyes on him. As long as you do the faith walk, as long as you look to his promises and his word, you can walk on that water. This is a time where we got to learn to walk on that water. That's a steady, that's an unsteady place. That's a place where we're not supposed to be able to walk without sinking. Uh, we're in a place right now where I don't care how many people's minds are messed up or how, how stressful they are. God will give us peace in the storm. Because once Peter looked at him, he had the faith to walk. And he become a water walker because he can walk on the water. It is not feasible. It is not natural for man to be able to walk on the water and not sink. We're going through this pandemic and we will not be destroyed if we keep our eyes if we keep our minds on God. Somebody ought to praise God today because it's necessary for us. For other people, it can be deadly, but for God's people, victory. No matter what happens, we've got the victory. Come on somebody and give God a hand praise for victory. So I will no longer look into the pandemic. I'm not going to worry about what the verdict is going to be. I'm not going to worry about people uh, being violent. I'm not going to worry. God said that will happen. But he also promised to keep him in perfect peace. Perfect peace whose mind, whose mind, your mind, whose mind is stayed on God. When I see things, my mind being stayed on God is the word and his promises that he's given me. Hallelujah. It's the only hope that I have. Because when I look at what's happening in the natural, it can become frightening. But when I remember God's promises, it gives me the faith to walk right on through that storm and know that I'm going to have victory. In that. I, I, I'm just saying so many examples of God bringing these people through the impossible. The children of Israel passed through the Red Sea, which was supposed to be impossible. And the men that didn't have God's favor drowned, but his people went through. That's the way it's going to be in this pandemic. Always remember that God is right there with you. Believe God for it. And every time you feel bad, just clap your hands and praise the Lord. And thank him for getting to the end. You just give God some praise right now. Open your mouth and thank him. Hallelujah. The word of the day I was talking and I went into my language and I started praising God. Hallelujah. Because when you do that, this stuff around here don't bother you. Guess what? Everything is under the control of him. Hallelujah. Nothing's going to happen unless God permitted it to happen. Oh, you got to walk in faith. You got to be a faith walker. I know what other people are going through, but God is taking me through. Look, I got beans in the cabin. I got some rice in the cabin. I got this in the cabin. I, I, I'm not outdoors. Our God is he's preserving me. He's keeping me. I haven't had to worry about nothing because God is covering me. And there are some people that may have to suffer through it, but that don't mean God or, uh, uh, loved them any less, but they're still alive. And God has made provision for his people wherever they are. Can y'all remember, when we get off these calls, remember, stay connected with God. Stay, don't wait to connect on Wednesdays. Don't wait to connect on Sundays. Don't wait to connect on prayer night. But connect with God every hour of the day by saying, God, what is your promise? Open up that Bible and God will talk to you. He'll tell you what your promises are. And you can say a yay and amen to everything that God has said. God bless you, saint. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. It was never meant for us not to be in the pandemic. We are to be in the pandemic to be a, 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 an example to everybody else and to the world that no matter what, God has not forsaken us. The children of Israel had to be in the famine. Joseph was sent ahead of them to go and make provision. God already knew what was going to happen before it happened, but it happened, didn't it? He sent him, and Joseph in his walk didn't know, why am I in the ditch? Why am I in a pit? Why am I sold to slavery? Why am I thrown in jail? I haven't did anything wrong. Destiny. Because God knew that the famine was coming. 
he knew it was coming. He had showed it to him and he sent him to prepare a way for his people. And that's how the children of Israel ended up in Egypt, which was leading to their vindication, where God was going to bring them from a, 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 a tyrant, a king that didn't know God, that he was going to set them free, that they can go and worship him. That's the way God is now. Like in the pandemic, we're going to go and worship God. We're not confined by what's happening around us, but I'm glad that my worship is wherever I want my worship to be. I don't have to be with you to worship God. I've learned how to worship God. He wants our individual worship. I know we come together and we worship together, but sometimes you lose that worship. But then when you get out there by yourself, hallelujah, it's something about even the church of Acts. When, 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 when negative things added to them, they had church. They had church in the jail. They had church. Hallelujah. Wherever they got beat, sent back, they had church. They began to praise God. Where do you want us to go next? Somebody should look at God and say, what, what do you want me to do next? Because the storm is not the problem. The storm is a place for me to get through to do what you want me to do. A place where I can find your will, where maybe I didn't do your will, like Jonah tried to run away, but he had to be in camp and, and in the well. He had to be not the well, but a large fish. And, and, and there was no light, there was no people around him. And he had no trust but to go to God. Don't you see this as a blessing? Right now, he's fixing the way you don't have a choice. You, It's up to you to take this time and do what God wants you to do. And let's talk to him and get closer. And you will find that God will answer you. And you will find a peace that passes all understanding. Let the Lord, let the Lord, let's give him a hand praise and let the Lord do, and raise up your hand and say, God, do your work. Tell me what I need to do. Do your work. The pandemic is your work. It wasn't sent to destroy me. It was sent to make me. It was sent to remind me of who you are. It was sent so that I can turn back from my backslidden state and I can get reacquainted with you. And it ain't nobody but me and you. Nobody but me and you. God bless you. And I believe that's why God did it. Because we're so used to being together. We're about to have a fit. We're about to die out. Because when are we going to see each other again? No. When are you going to see Jesus? And when you see Jesus... Even though we love each other, you won't miss each other so bad. Because you know why? He's supposed to be the center of your joy. And if he's the center of your joy, you ought to be praising him right now. That song said, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my salvation. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. God bless you, everyone. You, you, you have a blessed night. I want you to go away praising God. How we're going to make it through. Hallelujah. We may be at an impasse, but we're going through. They went through the Red Sea. They went through. They went through. The walls of Jericho came down. It was a block, but they went through. <laughs> People were starving, but God made provision for his folk. Brought them from another land to go to Egypt where they could eat. And he can get, give them their own land, which was the land of Goshen. And God's people were settled right there, not even among the Egyptians. He gave them their own land, influenced the king to give them what they want in the famine. What do you want in the famine? We're in the famine. God is still blessing in the famine. Don't you see what I'm saying? They, they, they increased. They had a lot of children. They survived. Hallelujah. They continue to multiply. You're going to, you know what? In the spiritual realm, you ought to still be multiplying. You ought to still be growing. Uh, not dying out, but growing. And having such a gratefulness to God for what he's already done for you. Good night, everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Continue to pray. We're going to pray for all those that we know that have been going through and lost loved ones. They just keep having lost. All right, I love you all. And if that, with all that being said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that just listen. This came out of nowhere, God. I just felt good about it because I know, God, that you can give us peace in the storm, God. You are making provision for us, Lord Jesus. You have covered us and you have blessed us. We're blessed to be here right now to hear the word of God.
We're not going to let the news overtake us. We're not going to let the virus, we're not going to worry about that because you have it all in control. This is not the first time that people were wiped out and yet you brought a remnant out. And God, we believe we're the ones that you will bring. You're bringing us this far. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we thank you right now for victory. We thank you for touching minds that people may be depressed because they're lonely. God, we're asking you to move through the airways and we ask that you bless them right now. Those that are living with the spirit of fear, let them get so in you, God, till they know to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord so we can have peace. So when our transition time come, God, we're able to go on and be with you because we weren't meant to be here always. So why should we fear? What shall we fear? Whom shall we fear? But God, I put my trust in you. We trust you right now because we're yours. God, when we are faithful to you, we are yours. God, and even though people have transgressed, some got to turn to the wall like Hezekiah. They got to let God extend his grace to us, God, and pray because you're able to extend us. You're able to refill us. You're able to revive us when we don't have anybody else to talk to. We got to learn that it didn't come from the preacher. It didn't come from Pastor Hicks. It didn't come from nobody else. But God, you're there. Wherever we are, you're the revivalist. You're the one that revived us. Yes, you use men, but now we're in a place where we're nobody was you. Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but, but you. The song said, you came to my rescue. See, you came to my rescue. And I thank you for it right now. God, we thank you for all those that are asking for healing. We know that you're able to heal them right now. Bless them over the dangerous highway. I had a, a, a goddaughter. She died two weeks ago in a, a, a fatal car accident. But we put our trust in you, God. Cover us with your blood. Keep providing. Keep talking to us. Don't turn away. We love you. And we're going to talk more to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good night, everybody.